So um, thank you all for joining me today. And uh, we have so many people from so many different time zones, you know, US, Europe, India, UK, so many time zones. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you everyone for this, um, for coming to, to join me today. So um, this beautiful event that we have uh, managed to put together. Thank you so much, Somorendro, who has helped me in sorting this out as well for allowing the Zoom and uh, with the European Manipuri Association. Um, I have completed my term as a general secretary, so I have, you know, stepped down and passed over to Somorendro now. So <laughs> he is um, sorting, helping all us out with from the Ima European uh, Manipuri Association. So thank you so much for that. And of course, thank you. Uh, I don't think Lipika has joined yet, but I will um, I will mention again when she arrives. Hi, Bo. I will mention again when she arrives. But Lipika Bushan is from um, Penguin Random House India, the publishers, who is co-presenting this event. And uh, she's the one who's made it all possible. All the beautiful banners in my email, et cetera, all came from her. So um, really thanking her for that. And I hope she's going to join soon. And of course, Imasi Foundation for all the information that's been provided. And Damusomi for the beautiful work and being here present today to talk about it. And our wonderful illustrator, Sapa, I'm trying to get the name exactly right, <laughs> Sapa Yunam, with his wonderful creations. I really, really love the artwork. Um, for me, it's like, you know, when I, the first email that I wrote out to everybody, some of you may have missed that email, but where I wrote saying that, um, for me, it's like a, a melding of two styles of art, you know, like ancient glyphic art and the melding of modern Zantangla. So it was like that for me, and that ancient and the modern mix. And it works perfectly fine for the story, for the style of the story. It's just wonderful. So I really love your artwork. And I haven't seen many of your artworks before, but I'm looking forward to seeing more of your work. So thank you so much for joining me. And Oja um, Mangangsana, you know, our folklore storyteller, balladeer. Oja um, Taoyangba for some of the beautiful stories. You have been the source of many of the stories, as so I've heard. Um, so thank you all. And Lansana, uh, everybody here who's joined. And of course, I want to Especially mention as well Hope Cook, who's joined us yeah. from New York this early morning. Her Royal Highness, uh, Her Royal Highness, the former Gelmo of Sikkim. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. I just ran and put my eyeliner on. Everybody. <laughs> That's why you disappeared. <laughs> That's why I disappeared. <laughs> so I hope it's not too early for you. Is it 10 o'clock for you? No, now? no, no. Yeah, no perfect timing. I am going to go pick up my lunch at 11. Uh -huh. so, have, uh, so forgive me if you're still going on. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's lovely to see it's you. Thank pleasure. you so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah. yeah so I did pass on the invite to two friends of Somi's, to um, Prava Rai from Mount Hermon and to Zeti, uh, uh, Somi's New York friend. But yeah. I, gave it at the last minute so i'm not sure if they'll show up okay maybe, maybe they will yeah yeah no, Reggie yeah. is not joining us she did yeah. yeah yeah he, he yeah apologies <clears throat> in here yeah but thank you hope for inviting yeah. me oh, well what can i do so me you're so bossy <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> it is <very> true. <laughs> so it's yeah so Speech is quite supremo. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone. And uh, where do I start? I mean, Manipur, the land of jewels. You know, the word money is jewels. It's the land of jewels. And it's so rich. I'm so, I feel so blessed to be born there and to be part of Manipur. Um, and I feel like, you know, I even say to my soul that, May I be born in Manipur again and again? You know, it's so such a beautiful place and so rich, so rich in our cultural, uh, you know, resources that we have. So beautiful our dance and music and art and 
the beauty of the land, the stories of the gods and goddesses. And for me, it's very much part of me because I am in the tradition, in the practice of um, shamanic and energy healing. So I'm very much in that connection with animals and plants. And yeah, I have my feathers even here, the eagle feather and raven feather. I thought they should be here because we're reading about frogs and monkeys and deers and uh, all sorts. So um, yeah, for me, it's very much um, a reality, uh, mythologies and gods and goddesses and nature and plants and animals. So I absolutely, although the book is mentioned as a book for children, uh, I think it's a book for every age. And um, for me, it's, it's been a fascinating read and it's really de delightful read and the artwork is absolutely wonderful. So it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. And it's sad to say that, you know, it's not so beautiful for me holding on to my iPad, <laughs> but so much more beautiful when you have a hard copy book and you hold it in your hand. There's nothing like it. But at the moment, I'm just reading from my iPad. So, yeah. Um, it's just a pleasure to be able to read this book with Damosomi and all our lovely young readers that I'm so excited to hear them reading. And um, so, yeah, let's um, begin to read. So Damosomi, please, um, would you like to say a few words before we start reading? Yeah, yes, I very much would like to say a few words. Words of thanks. Um, thank you, Samorendro, and thank you, Raja, uh, for hosting this from the European Manipuri Association. Your association has uh, imperially expanded into how many time zones now and how many countries. And so um, I want to thank all of you for joining us, especially by collaborators on this book. I could not have done this without them. Uh, primarily my friend Sapa Yumnam, the illustrator, uh, whose work everyone seems to have fallen in love with. And of course, um, Oja Tawyangba and Oja Mangangsana. And I don't know if Samorjit is here, uh, the historian, and, um, and Chanam Hemchandra, the archivist, who knows all these the old uh, manuscripts and all that. So it's been tremendous. Um, and, um, and pulling it all together is uh, my, uh, my colleagues at Penguin Random House, India, in New Delhi, uh, in the middle of a really, really difficult and dire um, situation in, the, in our nation's capital. I know we are all having facing this problem all over the world, um, but we've had uh, tremendous problems uh, in um, New Delhi. Um, uh, yeah. Even so far, it's been difficult to get the books out even. Uh, mm -hmm. because the warehouse has been ravaged with COVID and we've had deaths and illness. So uh, condolences to all the um, staff and colleagues from Penguin that have suffered from this. I know many are working from home. Many fell victim to the scourge right now. Um, so putting, uh, putting a book out in the middle of all this has been quite a challenge, but a very rewarding one. And that's why I just want to say thank you. And I think we should uh, take it from there. And I'm here to fill in the gaps wherever we can. The book is a book of mythology, Manipuri mythology. Um, and it's, I think, Penguin's first uh, book, children's book from Northeast India. And I, I think we're very uh, excited about that. Um, the, what we're introducing is the mythology of a Tibetan Burman region in the, the northeastern part of India, uh, but um, stories that predate um, its uh, conversion to Vaishnavism in the early 18th century. So all these myths are pre-18th century and written in uh, manuscripts and leaves, very similar in uh, when you look at the like Tibetan manuscripts in Maitemaik, which is one of the few in, uh, indigenous uh, Tibetan Burman scripts, um, and then they all have their oral counterparts, which Oja Mangangsana will tell us a little bit about. Um, and Oja Tawyangba, of course, has knows uh, the, uh, the old language that is in the manuscripts and has written his stories. 
which I have benefited tremendously from. Um, and the uh, drawings themselves, the paintings have been uh, inspired uh, by the uh, drawings of the Subika, the illustrated um, um, sacred, sometimes very secretive manuscript tradition of the uh, of the Manipuris. And these are um, illustri uh, these are uh, manuscripts of magic and sorcery and healing and ritual. And the illustration is uh, very unique. And uh, Penguin and I were really thrilled to have Sakha's work, uh, which revives and reframes and um, uh, presents Sabika art, the original religious art of Manipur in a modern art form. So everything has come together. And um, that's why the animals go. I just happen to like those and animals a lot. And so I've chosen the, uh, uh, the stories that feature some um, rather um, operative and cantankerous and argumentative animals and birds. And so um, this is a, this has been a venture that's been going on for quite a few years actually, but I started writing this in 2019 um, when um, Penguin decided to make it a uh, young adults edition. And so I, I want to thank everyone at Penguin and everyone at European Manipuri Association, all my friends here, uh, wherever they are, so many different countries are represented here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that, Amusome. It's so delightful to hear about our histories, you know, and, and it's, I mean, I really applaud you for your work because as you said, these stories are passed down through the word of mouth, you know, storytelling and to have it written and of course, we have it written, you know, since history, but to have it written in English now and to actually bring it out to the world, this is um, a really, really um, amazing. So thank you very much for that. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, where do we start? Samudon Ayangba, you know, ponies, polo. In the beginning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and the part, I'll share with you a funny story. When I sent out the first email, I put a little bit from the book, right? And I wrote about that is why you are, you will be a man will be a creative thinker about that part and um, will be a creative thinking man. And when I sent out that email, and that was somebody replied to me, ha ha, spoiler, <laughs> you've given out the ending. So for me, it was like the most. Um, uh, what should I say, a part that really resonated with me because being a creative person, I was like, yes, this is what I really resonate with. And that's the part I wanted to share in the email, what resonated with me, but that was funny. Yeah, so without further ado, I'm sure all the readers are so ready to read. So um, Jessica, I believe one of your friends was also supposed to join. Is she joining? She, he. Oh, uh, hi, Rajya. I don't think they could make it. Uh -huh. issue, so, so I don't think they'll be joining us today, regrettably. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, all right. That's wonderful. No problem. Okay, so we are going to read from just the first chapter. So we'll start um, on page number five, if you're all ready. Page number five, all the readers, all the young readers, Jessica, Padoy. Uh, Ngan Toy and Lam and um, Sorana also reading. Uh, yeah, so everyone get ready. Page number five. And I will just start reading just a little bit and then I will hand it over to you guys. So, page number five, chapter one. Sorarin looked down from the heavens and saw what his son had done, and he was pleased. Asiba, I see that you have fulfilled my wish, he said to his son, and created the many layers of earth, its waters, its hills and valleys, and things that grow upon it. Now, my son, go and create man so that he may live upon this earth. Bring him to me so that I may give him the gift of life. For as everyone knows, dear clever one, only Sararin, the eternal creator, can give life to all things. Asiba, the worker, was an obedient son. He set out to do what his father had bade him. He made animals that walked, birds that flew, insects that crawled, all except the owl. 
For as everybody knows, dear wise one, this ancient creature has existed before the creation of Earth. But I die. <clears throat> well, that is another story. And we hope that we'll get to hear that another time. <laughs> and the story I'm relating is about my why man is creative and can think. So I will leave it at that. And then I will give, hand it over to somebody. Jessica, would you like to read uh, from the next line? So after this. So after this, Asiva began to make man. He took some wet clay and made man, or what he thought was man. Because he had no idea what his father meant by man, he brought his creation to his father to, for him to give it the gift of life. So Raran looked at what Asiba had made. My son, what you have made is not man, this is fish. Go back and make man, he said as he looked at the clay model. But since you have made this creature, I will let fish also live for all its tomorrows and let it bring forth other fish. Saying this, Soren, the eternal creator, gave fit the gift of life and asked Asiba to let it live in the rivers and lakes. Asiba went back to make man. He took some more wet clay and made man, or what he thought was man, because he still had no idea what was part of it by man. He brought it to his father for him to give the gift of life. My son, what you have made is not All right, man. thank you. This thank you, cool. Jessica. I'll ask somebody to read the next line. Thank you. So what did you think about that? Would you like to share anything? Actually, I really like the interpretation of the story. And it's really interesting. And even though I can't really relate with it that much, but it's still really interesting. And I have no words to express it because All right. it's too good. Okay, amazing. Absolutely wonderful. All right. Tadoi, would you like to read from the next line? My son, what have you made is not man. Raja, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm struggling a bit with the uh, small Kindle trying to find the page. Uh -huh. So uh, who's, uh, who can read the next one? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, who would like to read? Lam or uh, Swarna? Uh, right there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. They have not, uh, they have chosen pages, page numbers. So okay. Is it okay for them to read their own pages? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'll bring them to. Uh, so now you read your page. Wait a minute. So this here is here. Which page was yours? Five eighty-four. Five eighty-four. This one, yeah. Read it from here. You can. So, Lama, you're going to introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, my name is Lam. And the surname? Um, Lamakram. And which year you are? I'm in, and I'm in year four. And how old are you? And I'm um, and I'm eight years old. And do you live in? Where do you live in? Or in London. In, in London. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. If I win, I will kill you. Python of the no, no. Start from here. I do. Um, okay. and the start um, again, please. And the uh, if I win. If I win, I will then kill you. Python of the deep. And then and to my to the family of my friend, perfect widow and her valiant son. Give me power and all and my help. And keep my promise to my friend. You will see the power of man blessed by man and man for him. We who are born on a single day also die, but once we may. I am the grandson of, of a chief. I am the offspring of a chief. I am also today the chief. Oh, oh fight, fight with me. Chanting this tomba the um, a cowboy chieftain had held aloft his fishing spear of flame. He held a magic fishing spear with its nine tongues of fire with all its all his might. 
His spear spiked. Um, Bobby Ray. Bobby Ray. Bobby Ray. Right, yeah. Um, Chuck. Right on the crown of its gigantic head, the monster python rift in pain and thrashed about in the churning water with the magic spirit of fire implanted on its head, roaring in an agony. It spun and dove and leapt, leaped it and reared, but the flaming spirit remained buried in, deep in its head. Tom, the magician warrior, ran after the serpent, a monster serpent as it swam and lessened her soul. Right, all right. Wow. Thank you so much, Lam. So you've chosen the magic sphere. So why did you choose that? Did you like that part? Um, because like, I found it interesting to, to read. Yeah. Um, Have you read the full book, the entire book? Uh, no, not yet. No, not yet? Wonderful. I think I read up to this and I like this page the best. Okay, excellent. Thank you so Thank much. You. That was wonderful. Yeah. Okay, Swarna. Mm -hmm. Space, you introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Swarna. I'm, uh, it's close up now. I'm 12 years old. I'm 13 years old. Um, I live in London and I'm in your eight. Hi, Swarna. Hi, Swarna. Okay. Which, which chapter? Page? Which chapter are you gonna read? Which which page are you gonna read from? Yeah. Oh, it's down here. Page one thirty something like yours. Okay. One. <clears throat> I know, but I'm too far. One one thirty is this side. Okay, I want to read some 130, 193 to 193. Is this the one you read? No, I don't need a part apart from this that I like. Okay. Um, um, the read the, share the page number first. I'm going to read to page 193 to page 194 in this part. Let's be loud. Man, elephant agreed. Together with man, they went to back to Sararin and told him everything. Upon hearing their words, Sararin thought in silence. Move this a bit. Very well, he spoke. If, if this is what you have all agreed upon, I'll allow it. And I have no more years to hand out. Man will now live for a hundred years. For I never know fifty and twenty-five and twenty-five makes a hundred. But this lazy and tidy creature called man must never forget. Ne must never forget the ge generosity and kindness of elephant and monkey. He must be reminded in the future for all his tomorrows and for all generations to come till the end of the time that the lifespan I have granted him was 50 years. But now he has received 25 years to monkey and 25 years to elephant. So Aaron then looked at man and declared, man, here's the thing. You shall keep your looks and stand up upright as I have made you for the 50 years I have granted you. But once you cross the age of 50 and start to live the 25 years you have received from monkey, your skin will wrinkle and fall like monkeys. So you will never forget you are living his years. And once you cross the age of 75, you shall start living 25 years you have received from elephant. You, your back will bend and you will stoop like an elephant so that you will never forget you are living his years. Let this be so. And this is why the curious one. Once man has lived to 50 years, he gets wrinkled like the monkey. And once he has lived 75 years, he gets stooped like the elephant. Thank you so much. You. Wonderful. So now we know why we stoop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So is Tadori going to read? Tadori and Antoi? Rajya, can you, can you just uh, carry on just one paragraph after the last one? So that we yeah, can... the last one. Um, page number five. Because it's not showing as a page, it's showing as a location on the Kindle. So that's why I'm a bit, uh, struggling on the page. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Well, just read whatever whatever you feel like, what they feel if like. You, uh, if you just um, carry on one paragraph, then I might be able to look at it. If not, then we'll just uh, read what she has been reading. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so. And so Asiba went back to work. He took some clay and made man. This time Asiba made it in the image he had seen reflected in the eye of Sororin. Soon he brought it to his father for him to give it the gift of life. 
page number seven now in my book. Yeah, we got it. So it's location 102. So All right. So Ryan looked at and Tada, you can start from there. So introduce Tada. Hi, everyone. Have a great Hi, everyone. My name is Tadoy and I am you are. I am going to read um, page one or two of them. One zero two. One zero two. Okay. Yeah. So there you hold it. Soren. Soren. Soren looked at what Asiba. Asiba had made. My son. What you have made is not man. This is a fish. Go back and make man, he said, and he looked at the clay model. But since you have made this creature, I will let, I'll let fish also live for all its tomorrows and let it bring forth other fish. Saying this, Soren, the internal mm. creator, gave fish the gift of life and asked Asuba to let it live in the rivers and lake. Okay. Asuba went back One more. <laughs> to make Yeah, 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 yeah. He took more wet clay and made men. Or what he thought was men, because he still had no idea what his father meant by men. He brought it to his father for him to give it the gift of life. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. So do you know Sorry. do you know who is Sora Rentadoy? The sky. The god of the sky. Yeah. Yeah, and interestingly, even I didn't know the meaning of Asiba. So I asked someone for me. <laughs> because I was thinking Asiba is like, you know, like dead one kind of thing. And he explained to me it's a Siba, like Pakon Siba, when you know when you give a job to somebody, I was like, okay, that's really interesting. <laughs> so even I have to learn the meaning, Sadoi. <laughs> so what about you, Nantoy? Are you gonna read us something? Come on, Nantoy. Nantoy, are you reading? Why don't you read long, long, long? She knows that one. Sisima Kagjitum Sadoi. Hello, I have Nangna Han introduced her. Hello, Nam Toy. Hello, my name is Nam Toy mm. and you I'm, can, what year? I'm year one. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. yeah. super. Mm. Okay. Ah, see the gift. My son, what mm. you have made, made is, is mm. not man. Mm. This is frog, frog mm. said Sora Sor Ren. Sor Ren. Mm. When he Barba. So, mm. what? Louder. A. Asiba. Asiba mm. had made. Mm. Go, go back and make man, mm. but, since, but, mm. since, since mm. you have made this, Creator, creator mm. I will let frog also live for all its 
tomorrow's. Tomorrow's. Mm. Oh. And. Yeah, well. yes. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gantoy. Thank you so much. <laughs> that is wonderful. She's only six years old, but she could read so beautifully. Thank you, Gantoy. Thank you. Actually, she's five. She's five. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, forgive me. Five. Beautiful. So that's why we have seven different kinds of frogs. How interesting. So yeah, thank you all so much for reading. Um, <clears throat> the source of these stories is so interesting, you know, like we have all these um, different written works, like in the original works. And that was to me, I'd like to talk a little bit about original manuscripts, how, you know, things were written. Uh, I also, I was listening to your podcast and I found it really interesting that our original manuscripts were written in handmade papers that were made from plants. And I have watched some, uh, you know, YouTube videos, some Japanese traditional way of making papers from flowers and plants, etc. And our heritage is very close to that and making your own ink from the lantern suit and things like that. So it would be really interesting to hear from you and also from, you know, Oda Hauyang, but also some source of some of the stories. I think actually, um, if I may, let's skip, jump ahead to Oja Taoyangba yeah. and, and ask him to weigh in on the manuscripts because, mm -hmm. you know, he's read them and has written from them and about them and he uses them. So yeah. Taoyangba um, and Lansana, are they here? Yes. Sir. Hello. Yes. Mm. Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Oh yes, I'm Tao Yang Ba. I'm I'm doing and publishing and uh, producing film from my childhood days. I read Puya, written in Mete Maye, and there are uh, so lot of many stories related uh, the man and the animal, man and the peace, and the goat and the man like that. That. That uh, it is very interesting stories. And I would like to publish, and I would like to uh, read and uh, told to some um, syndromes. And so, in this way, I write many folk tales relating uh, God and the goddesses and the uh, people like that. So. Uh, there are a lot of puya. In that puya, many stories is written in Mete Merak. And uh, uh, some minutes ago, that uh, madam uh, said that Ashiba. Mm -hmm. Ashiba is Ashiba is not that. Ashiba is other. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the Almighty's son, Sanamahi Ashiba. Mm. And the Almighty God, the uh, Creator, Son, Ashiba, Ashiba. Mm. Uh, Ashiba means uh, is that. Ashiba means order. So the Sanamahi is Ashiba. Sanamahi. Mm. Sanamahi is the uh, Son of All Mighty God. He created man, animals, birds, and uh, many things. Mm. Many things and everything. Okay. Thank you. Wow, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So, so um, I might say that Taoyangba, whom I've known for quite a while now as a film producer, he had written these marvelous uh, stories. You should see his little book. It was a little, tiny little thing. But um, there were stories told from the, again, it's something I adopted from him, uh, told from the point of view of a grandfather telling stories to their grandchildren. And these were stories that were marvelous. They ranged from Puya stories to folk tales. Some of them were humorists. And so um, um, I worked with them and then cross-checked with the oral sources of these stories um, because all these, the mythology of Manipur has both textual and oral and the oral also precedes. So if Mangansana is here, Vajay Mangansana, 
Uh, hello? Yes. Um, so now, I don't think you need your mask, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> please, uh, yeah. um, so um, at least uh, like uh, Oja Thawyang was talking about the Buyars, the, the stories come from, um, could you tell us a little bit about the oral counterpart, the sources of some of these stories that are also expressed in the ballads that you use? Yeah, there's uh, most of this uh, stories from the most book that we have been uh, listening since our very much childhood from our grannies and uh, grandfathers and that's very old people and unfortunately it was it was uh, was almost gone when we we started going to these schools and a modern system of learning then very luckily fortunately i started learning this pena music from my teachers. I have three different teachers. So from them, I could learn uh, many different versions of the these uh, stories. Because most of these stories are performed during the rituals, like uh, Pawebi, the Pawebi stories is uh, performed uh, during the uh, agricultural activities. And that's the creation of art and human was performed in uh, many of the rituals like uh, Yum Sangava, like uh, that is a, a making of new houses and and of course in the uh, various rituals and other bath rituals. So these are the ritual, it is, these stories are also related with the uh, ritualistic performances by Pena singers and uh, Amaibas. I, I, I believe Tamu Tawiyangwa also practiced this kind of stories on his uh, ritualistic performances. So uh, after losing our old tradition of storytelling, mm -hmm. then these ritualistic performances keep, keep alive in these stories be, to, to being with us. But uh, uh, yeah, of course that is how uh, some of the ritualistic performers like Tamu Tawiyangwa uh, started writing this kind of stories for, uh, of his own version from his own findings. Yeah, it is a, like a, this kind of uh, new books in English medium. It is very much helpful to the new, uh, to the, our future generation as well as to the outside English speaking people. So yeah. this is we mm -hmm. practice as well as now I believe it will remain forever. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. You know, where's our, our young man who was reading that poem about the warrior? What's his yeah, name? Lam. <laughs> Lam Okram. Lam. Hey, Lam. <laughs> How are you? Thank you so much. I loved your choice. Um, that particular um, part that he chose to read um, resonates with what Oja uh, Manang Sana was saying, and that the first few lines of the poetry. Uh, which was written by Tawiangba um, that I translated, goes back to um, a challenge, uh, 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 a chanting, a war chant uh, mm -hmm. that Manipuris uh, use. And we used to hear that when we were kids. We even did that in our baseball opening one time, I think, in Manipur. And yeah. that is when you hit your buttocks, usually bare, like sumo wrestlers, and when you say, what is it that you say? Nahade Jatrade. No, and that's how you go to war. This is you say, like, look, you're only you're only born once. Come on, you're only gonna die once. There's no need to fear. Let's go, let's get going. And right. I think that is the chant that we used to also uh, Chant when we were kids, when we we're about to fight or we are playing war or whatever we are wrestling and so on. And these are some of the ways in which the, um, the content of the myths and the origins they also transmitted in folk ways across generations using nursery rhymes. And uh, the other example that I want to give is that of the Pied Cuckoo. Um, and that uh, this is what is, uh, what is going to lead me to bring uh, Sapa into the discussion, and that is um, there is a chant, and the story actually I started talking the story from the nursery 
time. Uh, this is Nongobi Nongobi Sari Leno Ture Lena Se. Now we knew this when we were kids. Um, anyone below the age of 40 today, I've been observing, I've asked them, you don't know this thing anymore. But it's a chant to Nongobi bird saying, come on, let's go clean the rivers. And uh, and we learned this as a chant, and when we were illustrating, so I was illustrating the book and then we were choosing what to illustrate, what the paintings would be like. And because I had referred to Maitai Mayek and the manuscripts in this book, um, Sapa uh, chose to uh, portray the uh, uh, painting of a mother bird with her do uh, with the children with the beaks wide open because they always have to be fed, always hungry. Mm -hmm. And then above that, uh, he wrote the um, the chant, the nursery rhyme in Maitai Mayek. And the, the shape of the painting is that of a Manipuri manuscript, like a Tibetan manuscript. So where is Sapa? So, Sapa? Is it still here? Sapa has... Uh... Yes, Tamu. Yeah. Yes. To talk about the Nongobi drawing, please. Yeah, if you have it, show it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me... Yeah. Oh, where is it? This is a painting that readers all over India saw today when it was in the uh, spread in the Hindu Sunday magazine. And they reproduced two of um, Sapa's main plates. And here's, and they also reproduced this. Mm -hmm. Is it visible? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Actually, um, I mean, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for having me in this conversation. Actually, uh, this style of painting, actually, I just want to dedicate to my community because it's my own creation. I mean, in somehow, but the, uh, the the style is already existed, and I just bring into you know in this uh, present scenario, in this present contemporary art. So. Um, if we talk about the manuscript painting of uh, Manipur, I just want to, you know, give some, you know, characteristic future, uh, which is very uh, unique and uh, uh, which is not found in other, you know, uh, manuscript painting, uh, like uh, using of uh, abundant lines, you know, and uh, um, and their outlines and the using of colors like uh, black brown and uh, uh, yellow ochre or uh, sometimes blue uh, blue color I found and uh, gray color and uh, there is no any background and uh, no foreground representation and there is no any you know perspective also and uh, the figure itself is vividly you know projected and uh, it is uh, in uh, uh, what uh, I didn't find any specific representation of a particular, you know, god and a goddess, or particular, you know, uh, the uh, bird or particular animals. But when Tamo saw me uh, given me such opportunities, then I started reading about the whole stories about the mythology and all. So I try to imagine and I try to collect the all the you know cultural motive which I found from the manuscript and things of uh, Subikalai Saba, uh, Kutlo, and Numit Kenchenlong. And um, from that, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, from that, uh, I found many cultural motifs which are uh, arranged, uh, you know, um, repeatedly, uh, repeatedly, and uh, uh, I collected and uh, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, uh, according to the text of the you know mythology i mean for for that book i characterize and i try to imagine the action which tamo somi had already written and uh, i am bringing the you know functionally uh, the cultural motif in connection with the other motifs yeah this this uh, this is how i did in this uh, particular you know uh, illustration Wonderful. I was just going to ask you about your inspiration for, for your art, whether it comes from our original illustrations, um, because I have never seen, so I don't know. D does it come from our original artwork? Do we have illustrations in our puyas and our stories? Um, and and what, what kind of paint was used? Probably it was all natural, derived from plants, etc., in the original illustrations. 
uh, actually this was uh, I found a book a good book it was mm -hmm. introduced uh, good book it was written by the Mutua Bahadur is a collected manuscript painting mm -hmm. so from that from that I uh, it was in 2000, I mean, during my graduation time, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, that time, I, I, I really wanted to work on that, you know, particular style, but uh, there is something, you know, negligence in between, among the artists also, like uh, people are less considered about that art form. And, uh, and in our institution also, there is no any proper, you know, uh, uh, syllabus for, you know, uh, for that particular artwork. So, mm -hmm. but I, uh, after uh, my, uh, uh, while I was doing PhD in the uh, University of Hyderabad, uh, I um, uh, uh, and uh, in the uh, for, for, you know my my topic was the art and craft of Manipur. So from the folklorist pers perspective, so during that time I uh, you know uh, started you know thinking about that you know art uh, artwork and uh, I used to collect the uh, mythology from the fieldwork and all that. So after that, I'm, uh, I really, I mean, uh, decided, uh, I decided to work on that particular work. But after coming back to, to my, uh, you know, home, uh, I met uh, Wangun Somerze, if he's here, then uh, Wangun Somerze. And he was also talking about the, you know, the value, the significance of this uh, artwork and all. Then we used to chat together and uh, that's how I got inspiration and then, yeah. Wonderful. So that's really. Um, Sapa, can you show another full painting? Yeah. Yes, your, 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 every every before, story has this, one big painting and one small painting. This sorry. is a small. Painting. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, mm. You're going to choose the duck, right? Uh, here. Where is it? Okay. Just choose this. Uh, this is uh, uh, illustration from the chapter number one, man is creative and uh, can think. Like in this also, like uh, I, uh, what I uh, um, actually as a, uh, as a, uh, I mean, uh, printmaker, I used to, you know, uh, create painting uh, picture with the using of line. That is my skill. And uh, uh, I inspire uh, that art form because they are full of, you know, representation of uh, figure with the line. So there is uh, some connections between, you know, manuscript painting and uh, my, you know, printmaking as a, as a printmaker. So in this painting also, you can find two types of, uh, you know, uh, manuscript painting where I bought from the Subikalai Sava and uh, from the Kutla. So there is a two different type of style. First, uh, in the above, uh, you can find one, two, three, eight section, which is classified, you know, uh, which is uh, arranged within the, you know, uh, border. So it is basically I found from the Subikalai Sava and the next Next, uh, next, I uh, use another Subikalai Sava where I represent the Sora Rain, the image of the Sora Rain. Can everyone and see the painting? Because I can't see the painting. Yeah, it's uh, somehow kind of stuck in a system, I think. It's not uh, maximized. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, let me do it. Is it okay? Yeah, it's not opening up. It's not opening. We can see it as a thumbnail, but we can't see. It. Yeah, it's not opening up. Um, yeah, these are these. Uh, what uh, Penguin did was to commission <laughs> paintings, uh, one per uh, story, the 12 of them, and um, 
uh, and also a small, smaller painting per story. So he actually made 12 large paintings and uh, 12 small paintings. What you saw of the mother bird is a small painting and what he was mm -hmm. trying to bring up on screen is a larger painting. Yeah. Um, Sapa, why did you why did you try loading it in the meantime? And while let's go back to maybe uh, to other people and see get some comments in the meantime. Yeah, I would also like to go back to uh, okay, yeah, that's that, working yeah. right. That's working. Is it, yeah. Okay, so in this uh, particular uh, painting, I I try to bring uh, the, you know the um, three styles of manuscript painting here. So I refer uh, to Subika Laisaba, which is, uh, you know, the same, uh, they are talking about the same, but the, their representation of the uh, uh, figures are different. So you can uh, clearly, uh, you know, distinguish between the, you know, uh, what I represent up a part up of the top of the part and uh, in the middle part and in the bottom part also. So why uh, during my creation of this, you know, particular uh, story, I was thinking about the main character, uh, about the Soraren and about the Asiba, but there is no any reference where I took the, you know, Soraren and Asiba because in the manuscript painting, there is nothing about, you know, the, uh, they haven't said that this is Soraren, this is Asiba. So I bring, I try to bring the two, uh, you know, uh, two uh, images where you, you can, you know, differentiate, uh, you know, visually also. And uh, between the, uh, while I'm working, I'm just thinking about the, you know, uh, the hierarchy among the god also. Like Soraren is something higher than the Siva. So Siva is the son of the Soraren. So I, I try to put the Siva in the, you know, lower part yeah. and uh, uh, that the uh, Soraren in the, you know, upper part. So whatever, uh, because uh, Asiva can connect with the people, I mean, in mm -hmm. my understanding. So he is trying to create a man, I mean, in a small, you know, uh, you know size. But this is my own, uh, in a, uh, something uh, new, uh, what to say, uh, changes in this painting. In the manuscript painting, there is nothing about, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, what to say, differentiation of the man, uh, according to their sizes, according to their placement of the, you know, uh, in terms of their composition. Uh, and after that, uh, Tamo Somi was also saying that you, you didn't put the, you know, uh, the animal motif, uh, fees about the fork, about the monkey and all. So after that, I just thinking of, you know, uh, you know, arranging that. So after I took another manuscript style, which is I arranged in the up top of the uh, you know, uh, painting. So first is, what I signify is the space. There is a void. There is a something, there is nothing. So after that, he created the plants on art. After that, he created the feast. And after that, he created the uh, frog, then a bird, then, uh, you know, uh, monkey, then an um, man. Beautiful. So it's a beautiful depiction, really beautiful. Um, Thank you. I, I look forward to seeing more of your work. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for that explanation. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I would like to go back to the storytelling, you know, the, the folklore, the <clears throat> how our story, so storytellers would tell stories through music and dance. And, you know, we have dancers like Len Sanal, the dancer and singer. We have uh, Oza Mangang Sada. So I am going to request Oza Mangang Sada if we could have a little Pena uh, recital and perhaps Marjing as well. Uh, just, you know, how story was told through music. Uh, yeah, for instance, I have uh, selected this uh, one a uh, few lines from Howie B, the uh, rice goddess. So in Pena rituals, mm -hmm. uh, the name of the Howie B was given in so many names, like uh, uh, about it is appraising how 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 she is uh, capable, how how she makes uh, the mm -hmm. rices as well as she how uh, she preserves many uh, different kinds of plants and 
yeah this is that is uh, then how she manages the climate and these are the uh, this is a few line of rights mm -hmm. so uh, here you might not able to understand all the names but let me try to sing better to make you enjoyable <laughs> Chingumati happy konum sayun yambi Pami yambi si chaming happy pumming happy chinu lema chinming nabi Hai nu lema hai ming nabi yamo mahi loi nai loi mom poi bi ไอ้คุณทบปีตะยุมนายกปีหงคุณทนบีกุลังนาสีชาวบีหามาปารีนอกทานะมุมนาวนามนุเยตาดีบีภวาโอนมูตายวังปานเดอีวัตปาเดค
still we have to go very long journey yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. that was that was want... absolutely enchanting Thank and you. beautiful Thank you. and exquisite that was beautiful and i just want to add sorry tamutomi i just wanted to add to udamangangsana's uh, words that yeah it's a beautiful way of uh, keeping our stories alive through music and dance and you know as words we can forget but when we keep it alive through that our stories can continue so that is really beautiful yeah Tamil so please continue um i just wanted to say to lan and to jessica and tadoy that the story that <clears throat> that oja mangaksana was referring to and singing about is the story about the deer and why the deer does not eat rats so the poet, that's the story of Pawoiti, which uh, Mangangsana has composed again. And the four directional gods the, that Mangangsana talks about, who are trying to stop the goddesses of prosperity from leaving the valley, one of them is Marji, also known as Sanamari. Yeah. And that is the guardian god of the directional god of the Northeast. Yeah. We have also recognized Marji as uh, as an aspect of Sanamahi, as the uh, now today as the god of the polo uh, uh, pony, money for a pony, as well as the game of polo. So, uh, in another iteration, Lansana herself, I hope you are, I see that your connection is a little slow, but maybe Lansana also has been singing um, and she has a song um, about. Polo, uh, which was a game that Marjing, the directional deity, the guardian of the Northeast, was also one of the players in the original game of Sagul Kanje um, at the wedding of uh, Bakangba. So, or was it the coronation? Wedding or coronation, I forget. Um, so, of these 17 uh, players, seven to a side, Marjing is, I think he played the full back, he, was, he played defense, and there's a whole thing about what kind of, which god was playing in which position in polo, and if Lansana, tell us a little bit about your song and who wrote it, and about the song of polo that you have been singing. Uh, thank you, Babung, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, this, uh, we have our traditional music and this um, Sagul Kangje is based, uh, based on the origin of Polo. So this uh, Sagul Kangje was composed by Oza Angokton, late Oza Angokton. Uh, so can I sing yes, some please. of the lines song? Yes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> Yang lay ma pa ai re, ko dau nong ma don thak si da, ko yum na yam pum na ma na, ma sa kak si ngang na ri, sa yang lay ma pa ai re. My kai mari sung dai ni pan sa yang lai ma koi pai pai ko yum la yam pum na ma na pa si hai du na tan na ri sa yang lai ma pa ai re yeah we have wow, 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 Lansana, wow, amazing voice, amazing voice, so wow, so beautiful, thank you for that. Thank you so much, Lansana. Will you tell us a little bit about what was in your song, explaining a little bit? Um, in the uh, in the earliest, I mean, uh, all the ponies have mm -hmm. their wings. Yeah, but yeah. Then after that, the Almighty uh, have decided to cut the wings uh, to start uh, to uh, to play Sagul Kangze. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. So it was about that the song. 
And that is why uh, in the book, we have one of the stories towards the end called Why the Manipuri Pony is Sacred. Yeah. And that is relating to what Lansana just sang. And yeah. also the, uh, the other story about uh, why Manipur is the birthplace of polo. So a lot of these performative traditions, both contemporary, modern, as well as traditional, um, have resonances and connections to some of the, to all the myths that we have been um, you know, reading about and we hope to bring more to, you, to your attention later on. But in researching the book, one had to go back between text and oral, between song and uh, literature. And so that's been an extremely rewarding and interesting uh, search uh, on my own, uh, working with the stories of Ojaya Thawiyangba, talking to the archivist of Chandan Him Chandra, et cetera. So um, the performances are all related to the songs and to the stories as well. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So um, the time is, uh, talk is ticking. And I um, just wanted to open to everybody if there's anything everyone would like to say before we close it. It's been absolutely delightful. Um, you know, interaction with everybody here. There's yeah, so much just... to learn. There's so much to learn. So much to talk about. So much to listen. Oh my God! I, I think I can sit here for five hours doing this. <laughs> I I would love to see only. A yeah, Margie, small... you wanted to yeah. read a little bit as well. Yeah, short short excerpt, not very really long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed out. I know. I promised you. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Fine. Yeah. So... It's from chapter number five, and mm -hmm. it is why the dog does not brood her own eggs. Yeah. So when uh, the cleansing of the rivers was started by Dr. Ting Mang and his brother, there was a, a scene uh, where all the creatures on earth started to swim towards the mountain to the north to save themselves. And this is what I wanted to read, the Maiti Make part. Uh -huh. So Make, this is written in the new Mete Make font script, which reads out Yen Nanu the Kaiduna Kauduna Hirami. I give Marum Nushiba, I the Iruba Hizade, I will not can view, which literally means uh, the chicken says, the hen says to the duck, My dear, dear friend, I don't know how to swim. Please save me. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you, Margin. Thank you. That was beautiful. I love that uh, my day may reading part because, in fact, I was going to ask Papa also earlier when you showed the art with the little uh, Metelon script because I cannot read, unfortunately, <laughs> Metelon. So, yeah, that was really beautiful part that you read. Thank you. Also, so much. for everybody who's not aware of Margin, he's an excellent, amazing artist, Pena Balladier. He performed last time beautifully. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you so much, Margin. Yeah, so uh, we are um, now sort of coming to the end, coming to the close. Anybody would like to share anything, any comments? Okay, uh, Chiraja. Uh, yeah, hi, Sushma. I, uh, I have a doubt now. Uh, so I'm Sushma. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Mm -hmm. um, in the story, uh, first story, uh, the sky god Soraren, he ordered his son Asiva to make, uh, to make his earth and man. Uh, but while in my childhood, uh, I heard about this Atiya Guru Siddhava. So Atiya Guru Siddhava ordered that, uh, say created the earth and like that. So, uh, who actually is Atiya Guru Siddhava? Is it Soraren or is it uh, Sanamahi Asiba? So this uh, question I would like to ask. So uh, if uh, this uh, Pabung Thauyangba or Pabung uh, Mangangsana, if they can clarify my doubt, then I would be really grateful. Mm. Yeah, uh, let me answer a little bit. That's Atiya, which means Soraren, in the sky itself. Uh, Guru, it is, a, it is a new, it may be new word, but we have been using it for many centuries. So it is, so now it is Guru itself, a world word. Guru, which is, uh, means, uh, which is capable to uh, order 
or who have a very big knowledge, good knowledge to maintain uh, the everything. That's a very much knowledgeable person. So Atiya and Sararen is the same word. Like uh, we have many, many different, many, many words that uh, we have two different words like uh, Lija or Ising. Lija is a more earlier word. Ising is a new word. So we have such kind of things. So Atiya, it is an uh, old word. And the sorarel, which has become a letter word, letter part. Letter we, we used to know it at the sorarel also. So, mm -hmm. uh, so like uh, I have also mentioned earlier that we have so many variations, many uh, variations in the names. Like, uh, say for the uh, like uh, I just mentioned that Chikmin Nabi, Haiming Nabi is the name of the poet. If I say Chikmin Nabi, then some many people might not understand. Chikmin Nabi is the name of another name of the poet. So, like that. Atiya or Sararel is the same person, and the Guru is uh, knowledgeable. Chidava is uh, never die, it is uh, uh, immortal. Like, uh, that is uh, something we uh, we have in our fair that the Almighty, they are never die. They are always in the desert. So it is. Okay, the eternal <laughs> <Please>. one. <laughs> yeah, eternal, yeah. 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 yeah, that is a very simple one, but I hope you agree with me, Sasma. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Baba. It's actually a very, very uh, interesting question, very good question, because in writing this book, um, I actually used the word Atiya Guru Siddhava in some of the earlier drafts as well. Okay. And I must have rewritten the stories like 10 times. Um, and each um, in, in each draft, we, you know, I was thinking, okay, who is my reader? The reader is going to be someone reading in English. That person reading English may be Manipuri or may not be Manipuri, but it's going to an English reading public. And one of the things that I did consider was how to uh, simplify the reading process for the non-Manipuri who might be barraged with many different titles and words that may be common and uh, familiar to us, but maybe new to them. Like for instance, Nong Tang Leima, the, the goddess of lightning, uh -huh. you know, um, I only use the word once, the name once, Nong Tang Leima. In subsequent use, I just use queen of lightning. If I keep using Nong Tang Leima, which to us may be a very simple uh, mm -hmm. name because we have heard this name since childhood, but for the non manipur reader mm -hmm. in English, the penguin reader, the puffin reader, many, you know, putting in many Manipuri words for accuracy and for uh, putting in the detailed uh, ethnography of the names, for instance, would not serve the purpose of a children's book of getting to the child readers. So I did choose the name Soraren because that's actually a shorter word than Atiya Guru Siddha, for instance. Yeah, it, uh, has, it would be very so that's long. The, that's one of the things that I did. <laughs> Thank you, Sushma. Great question. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Kasami. And thank you, Oda Mangangsana, for the Atiya and Sorarian. I was thinking of the same thing as Sushma was saying, and then I'm thinking there's Atiya and there's Sorarian. Which word comes from where? But that clarification, I've also learned something new from that. So thank you so much, everybody. And so we're coming up to now well, a quarter past. So I suppose I will have to bring this to an end. Thank you so much, everyone. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Be safe. Thank you.